Oh, we got a beautiful show for you tonight, folks. Let me tell you. Oh, by the way, Emeril Lagasse here. <laughs> I have a little quiz for all of you. You guys ready for this little quiz? Yeah. Okay, try and guess the main ingredient. Shh. Try to guess the main ingredient in tonight's show. I'll give you a couple of clues. <laughs> Legally, it's classified as a vegetable. But botanically, it's a fruit. And some advocates claim it has aphrodisiac powers. No, it's not oysters. Any guesses? Tomatoes, that's right. Tonight, we're gonna kick tomatoes up notches unknown to mankind right here, I can tell you that. I'm going to talking about starting with a caramelized onion rosemary tomato bread, if that sounds okay to you guys. And then green tomatoes. We're going to do a little fried green tomato served with a lobster and teardrop tomato salad, if that's, you know. Have you ever heard of pimento cheese? You have. Are you all from the South? Warm pimento cheese stuffed Creole tomatoes. Oh, to die for, to die for. All right, so if you're ready, I'm ready. We'll celebrate tomatoes right here on Emerald Live! <laughs> Happy, happy. Happy, happy. You know, as we always uh, start, uh, we always kind of like to uh, just kind of point out tomatoes. Boy, what would we be without tomatoes, huh? I mean, every culture that I can uh, possibly think about, warm, cold, loves tomatoes. Doc Gibbs loves tomatoes. I mean, he's a tomato freak. You can't really see him, but he has, actually, he has a tomato drum. He doesn't bring that out too, too often, but maybe he'll have it out for you later on. And by golly, there's tomatoes, but... Uh, you know it. <laughs> you got beefsteak tomatoes, both yellow, red. You always want to look for the smooth skin, the ripeness of tomatoes. Because unfortunately, in this country, about 70% of the tomatoes that are sold are generally hothouse tomatoes that are picked pretty much when they're green. It's this time of the year now as we're coming into the late spring, summer, and fall that we get great beefsteak tomatoes, Jersey tomatoes. These little, these are called lollipops. We've got some little grape. Those, yeah, you're welcome. It's a souvenir. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to get into a lot of this yet because I'm going to save this for you later on. Very popular in the South, green tomatoes. Yeah, they're really green. And uh, it's, well, like I said, we'll get into those later on. I love beefsteak tomatoes. Nothing like a little beefsteak tomatoes with some blue cheese on them, you know? Oh, a little olive oil. Orange lollipops. And look at these guys right here. You want to talk? I love these little things. We've been using these a lot in the restaurant. These are called currant tomatoes. Look how tiny these are. Put one of those between your cheek and gums. And See how that is. And they have little teardrop tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes. Those are those ones from the old seeds. You don't really see a lot of them because they can't really grow them in big quantities. They're in small, small plots. These are some of my favorite ones in mean, the heirloom tomato. This is a little green zebra tomato. They have these little yellow ones like this. Check this one out. Look at the color of that, huh? Just beautiful. So tonight, we're gonna kick it up a few notches. All kinds of tomatoes that we're gonna use. This would be a good time for you before we come back. Got a special guest in the house. 
and Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Yeah, stick around, we'll be right back. He just joined us doing a whole show on tomatoes. We just went over all kinds of tomatoes and had a little tomato song by Doc Gibbs while you were doing whatever you're going to do. It's really great. Salsa? Little salsa, tomato That's salsa it. thing. While you were doing that, we were rocking out with Doc and Cliff. I started sauteing and caramelizing in some olive oil, a little bit of onion. And uh, about eight or 10 minutes that's gonna take. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of fresh garlic. Now, you wanna do that obviously right at the end because you don't want the garlic to burn. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna make a wonderful tomato bread with rosemary. Delicious and easy. Watch. We're going to start the dough while we're waiting on our garlic. I'm just going to turn this heat off right now on the stove. Just let that just finish cooking for a minute. H2O, water. No more than about 110 degrees. If you start getting over 110, you're going to kill the yeast. So depending on how hot it is when you're making this in the house, well, you know, you could be making it outside, I guess, but <laughs> right around 100 degrees is good. Add the H2O in there first and dissolve the yeast in the water. Now, for all you closet yeast fans, and you know who you are, I can see the faces in here. If you are one of those, Check out the expiration date on the yeast <laughs> to make sure you still get a rise, if you know what I'm saying, okay? Rise, the dough, the dough, you know. The dough. Now we got the rise police. Another indication when you sort of dissolve the yeast like that, you'll usually get some froth on top if it's still fresh. <laughs> now, got that started? This is how simple. Little olive oil, good olive oil. Little sugar, salt. I even like to add a little bit of fresh pepper. Rosemary. I don't know about you guys. Right now, my rosemary is like taking over the house. <laughs> really. And if that happens, good way to use it. There's just something about this fresh rosemary inside of this bread when it bakes and it perfumes the dough. Incredible. So, again, you whisk that up. Nice, nice. Then what we're gonna do is this. This is cool. We're gonna add the onions and garlic in here now. Never heard of that in a bread, huh? Them bunny guys haven't done that yet. Now, now we start making the dough. I'm using bread flour. All-purpose flour works, one of them. Difference being, bread flour is going to have a little bit higher, more gluten in it. Hey, whatever knocks you out. Got all purpose, fine with me. A little bit at a time. Stop making the dough. Of course, if you got one of them fancy machines with one of those hooks, you'd be done now. You'd be on your, 
you'd be on your third cocktail. Now, this could take all night. No, I'm just kidding. Basically, the dough now is going to start coming along and off the side of the bowl. You see that forming? Forming a nice ball. It's exactly what we needed to do. And then what we're going to do, two options here. Depends. You're washing the dishes, you're not washing the dishes. You're washing the dishes, hey, leave it in the bowl. You're not washing the dishes, get another one like it, teaspoon of olive oil, take the dough out, put it in there. Whatever you want to do. Now you can, you know, go to the store, whatever you're going to do. It's going to take an hour and a half, two hours. You don't want to get it too hot. It's got to rise. It's got to proof, okay? So you get a couple of hours. It's worth it. This is what it looks like when it does that, okay? Cover it up. Make it rise like this. Now you're ready to work with it. What do you need? Hey, not much. Now you know why. In most cookbooks, they tell you not to use this. They tell you to use like a damp cloth or a dry cloth. That's the reason why. But you can use plastic. Now, here's the deal. I got a little uh, flour that I'm going to put on the, my work surface here, a little bench flour. I'm going to take the dough out. Okay? Now, if you want a gigantic loaf, leave it like that. You want rolls? Cut them in rolls if you want to do rolls. Let me tell you this awesome tomato bread with this rosemary. Here's what I like to do. Little flour. Cut it in half first. Take this half. Thirds. Thirds. Too much flour on your surface, you're not going to be able to roll. You're not going to get enough friction to make the rolls or the loaf or whatever you're going to do. Just take a little bit of the flour off. Now here's what we do. We take this, make a little roll like this. See, I'm not getting quite enough friction yet, but I will. There we go. Got one roll. So I want them smaller. So they're going to proof again. They're going to get twice twice as big as this size, you see? You with me so far? Yeah. Just checking, there's a quiz at the end of the show <laughs> on your way out. And don't forget, please, leave the dollar. <laughs> now, so six of them. Got to let them proof. Before you let them proof, though, this is what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get nice, ripe tomato. Make some slices about that thin. See that buck? Quarter of an inch, right? Here's what I like to do. For these proof again, make a little X in them like this. See that? One or two slices of tomato, depending on what you like. 400 degrees, you pop them in the oven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 400 degrees, you pop them in the oven. About half, three quarters of the baking time, which is about 12 minutes, like this here. See these? That's about 12 minutes. Not quite done. Know why? Because I said to myself, Sal! How do I kick them up another notch? Yeah. What? Here's how. You take them out, you take some good olive oil like this. Make them smile. They're smiling right now. Hey, what do you want? It's Italian olive oil. I'd be smiling too. Then, blue cheese. Oh yeah, you ain't fooling around here, you know. I don't know what those other late night shows are doing, but. <laughs> blue cheese. Cheddar cheese, whatever kind of cheese you got. 
right? Cheese like that. And then I got a little bit of crushed red pepper just to another notch, if you know what I'm saying, right? Just a little bit of crushed red pepper like that. Back in the oven. When we come back, I'm going to show you what they look like finished. And then another notch. <laughs> Stick around. Not the tomato drum. Well, we, we could call it the tomato drum. But the other name for the tomato drum is Guica. A Guica. Yes, from Brazil. From Brazil. Yeah. Doc Gibbs on the Guica. <laughs> we are just getting an incredible amount of uh, requests, ideas. This is from Barbara, dear Emerald. What exactly is a green tomato? You can uh, actually see that up there on the screen. Actually, a green tomato we use a lot in the South. And it's, uh, you know there are over a thousand varieties of tomatoes? It's incredible. This is a fully mature, green tomatoes are fully mature, except they're not fully ripened. They haven't turned red yet. But they are fully mature. And so, great places like uh, Louisiana and in, uh, in Georgia and Alabama, Mississippi, do a lot of things with fried green tomatoes, where they actually slice them. Most of the time, they bread them, and they saute them. The condensation, the trapment by breading them, traps the moisture and really just kind of makes them really, really even more juicy. We do them with crab meat. We do them with all kinds of things. I'm going to do a dish for you in a little bit here. Also, want to uh, introduce my good friend, Mark Elman's in the house. He's going to see him in a little bit. We're going to do a uh, little cooking together. And Mark and I go back a long, long way. Great chef and some exciting news we're going to uh, share with you all about what he's up to. So we'll have him. Of course, we've got the Guica. And uh, <laughs> Cliff had a rough night last night. You can see he's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he had a few, he had a few uh, tomatoes last night. Had too many. <laughs> a little bit too many. Now, what I'm going to do is this. A lot of... You know, craziness, controversy right now about using mayonnaise, you know? I don't know who, it, look, I, the mayonnaise police driving around, you know, with a flashlight, you know? It's Johnny! Dad, you're making fresh mayonnaise! You know? I mean, you know, what do they think in Washington? We don't have any common sense or something. I mean, I, you know, oh no, let's make some mayonnaise. I got a great idea. This is perfect, you know. Let's make some mayonnaise together as a family. Let's put it in a jar. Let's put it in the car where it's 105 <laughs> degrees, right? Let's just kind of drive around for a couple of days on summer vacation, and then we'll make some sandwiches, right? I mean, come on. Don't get me started, I'm telling you. So we're going to make some fresh mayonnaise. I have a safe egg here that I'm going to add in this blender. And some Dijon mustard. Very simple mayonnaise. The juice of a half a lemon. I mean, come on. I like to kick mine up a couple of notches, you know what I mean? Just a little hot sauce in there. A little bit of salt, so it tastes good. I just do mine in a blender. If you got one of them smaller machines, you can do that as well. I take this thing out, just to leave it loose, and I turn this thing on. 
I use regular vegetable oil. Just slowly drizzle it in like this. Little drizzling music by Doc Gibbs. Hear that? Sounded like the vacuum, huh? Just ate the cat. I mean, that's how simple it is. You want it thicker, you can get it thicker. You want it lighter, you get it lighter. You want it thicker, add a little bit more oil. You gotta do it slow. Reason why we're doing this fresh mayonnaise is because when we come right back after this break, you ain't gonna believe this tomato salad that I'm gonna do with some lobster. And then after that, Mark Elman and I, another knot, stick around! Back in. All right, the bread is ready. By the way, that was Doc Gibbs and Cliff on the uh, BAM sticks. Not too bad, huh? Somebody uh, I heard in the back said, well, it kind of looks like focaccia. So I would just kind of serve these. Cooperate, please. There we go. It's that cheese, you know? So there you go. You just uh, kind of bring that to the table like that. That ought to make somebody happy, don't you think? Beautiful. That cheese gets a little sticky right there on that parchment paper. You guys are friends, right? Thank you. I might as well feed you now, Mark, since I know what's coming next. So I hope you're going to feed me. Thank you. There you go, My buddy. My pleasure. Thanks. Okay, folks, so uh, look, you don't like rosemary, use tarragon, you can use any kind of herb you want. Just a wonderful, simple bread, but with this tomato and the cheese particularly, it's awesome. Now, speaking about tomatoes, I promised you I was going to make you a little salad, so here it goes. Real simple. Boiled up some lobsters. Why? Feeling big today, that's why. Feeling big. <laughs> Green tomatoes. Mature but not red. But boy, are they good. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with them. Our mayonnaise that we made, very hot. Let it cool a minute. I'll have some salad up for you in a jiffy. <laughs> See? Look at how delicious that that looks. The juice in there. What I like to do is I like to cut them about a quarter of an inch thick like that. We do these with a crab meat sort of salad at Delmonico in New Orleans. I'll tell you, we can't get enough green tomatoes. Let me show you how easy this is. We take these like such, season them with a little salt and a little pepper. You do this ahead of time. Then what I like to do, the perfect breading, I like to take flour, equal amounts of flour and cornmeal. Sometimes a little mozzarella, which is the fine corn flour. 
but it really makes a good blend. So we'll mix that up together. Now, I don't know where you get your flour, your cornmeal from. Where I get it in the supermarket, it doesn't come seasoned. So that's when you gotta add a little salt, little pepper. I'm gonna use a little bit of my essence in here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna use some in here too. Yeah, kicking them up a little bit. They're happy now. All right, so now I've got my seasoned. Now it's simple. Now it's very, very simple. I'm gonna use this cast iron skillet. You don't have to. I'm gonna take my tomatoes like this, dredge them right inside of this flour. Really good. Dredge them right inside of there. Then, yeah, you can, um, I hear somebody in the back there. You can put them in, sometimes what I like to do if I'm not getting a lot of moisture, a lot of moisture content, I put them inside some buttermilk first. Oh, it makes them really, really tasty. But this is kind of light. If you can get them like this, mostly in the late spring, summer. Then what I do is I just take like a little bit of oil. Regular non-stick pan would work too. I'm just using this little cast iron. And what I do is I begin to just start frying them in that oil like this. Now, while that's frying up, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take regular, that regular mayonnaise that we had, right, that we made just was plain seasoned mayonnaise. Going to take a little bit of that mayonnaise and I'm going to kick that up a couple of notches. I'm going to add some tarragon. Chopped shallot, you could use red onion, a little garlic. Capers, I love capers. I like to smash them a little bit like that, get all that vinegar flavor that they're sitting in, in there, you know? And then again, the juice of a little lime or a lemon. Let's check our tomatoes out here. See that? Really light, not like this heavy breading. See how I'm using the side of the skillet like that? So that way the tomato, people have a, they're freaked out about turning things like that. The other way too is just using your finger. See that? That was a finger turn. <laughs> hey, every now and then, Doc, you gotta have a little finger turn, you know? <laughs> All right, folks. Now, a little more fresh pepper. Hey, you can add to this mayonnaise whatever you like. Maybe you like chives, add chives. Hey, maybe you like parsley. Go ahead, add parsley. <laughs> now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all the flavor in this mayonnaise. Then what I did is I just took some lobster meat, or I'm gonna take some lobster meat, and add some lobster meat to it now, okay? If you want them in bigger chunks, have it in bigger chunks. Now let's take the tomatoes out and then I'm going to show you guys how we're going to finish this. Very simple fried green tomato salad. Just like anything else you're frying, just because you're doing it in a skillet, folks, doesn't mean you, gotta, you can't season it. You got to season these as soon as they come out because that's when they're like, they're like thirsty then, you see? All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this plate right here, use him for some decoration. <laughs> I'm going to take some fried green tomatoes, about three like that, looks like a good portion to me. I'm going to take our lobster salad, but I got to come over here and go, ah, let's see, little currant tomatoes. Some of these balloons, popsicles, yellows, reds, toss it up, kind of like that. And toss it right on side of the tomato, you see, with that lobster. Does that look all right to you guys? Yeah. Bam! Yeah. 
just like that. Just that was a little one. Here's a fried green tomato lobster salad. I got to tell you something. I know this guy for over 10 years, a great, great chef. Used to have the best restaurant in Maui called Avalon. And now he's doing something very, very interesting. Mark Yellman, when we come back, him and I are going to kick it up another notch. Stick around. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Doc Gibbs and Cliff. A lot of you folks out there that, uh, that know uh, many, many times that uh, I've always talked about Hawaii. We've done a lot of food in Hawaii. It's because of guys like him, my good friend, Mark Elman. I met him uh, more than 10 years ago when uh, he had a V restaurant in Maui uh, called Avalon and family owned and uh, just an awesome chef. And, Really was uh, the, one of the new pioneers in Hawaiian cooking. Great guy. We've been buddies a long time. But interesting enough, uh, I found out just recently that he was going to be in Manhattan. So I said, hey, come on over. Do some sort of, it's magical what he does, his flavors. The reason why he's here is because he just opened, uh, this would be how many now? This is number 14. 14. He's just opened a wonderful, uh, about eight years ago, uh, when he first took me there, a place called Maui Tacos which is where you're from, <laughs> from Maui. And uh, we sense. went, really beautiful fish tacos, all kind of, it was just, it was delicious. And now uh, it's great to see 14 later, now in Manhattan, Thank Atlanta, yes. uh, Delaware. Congratulations. San Antonio. Now yeah. I'm Thank hungry. Now yeah. I'm hungry, now I want to eat. What are we doing? We're going to do. Mark Elman, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? We're going to do, uh, a t since we're honoring summer tomatoes today, Okay. I went down to uh, the local Amish market over here and got all these Look wonderful tomatoes like you have here. Beautiful. So we got four different types of tomatoes here. Beautiful. And then we have pineapple, Hawaii. Oh, so that's what Maui tacos. This is sort of the, the niche that we're, we have at Maui tacos. So, so you've got fresh pineapple you're putting in the blender. Fresh pineapple. And we're going to make some fish tacos mm -hmm. with a pineapple tomatillo sauce. <laughs> Oh, that sounds Pineapple good to you. Pineapple tomato huh? sauce. All right. So, and we're going to leave part of these diced tomatoes because we're going to fold those in after we puree. Okay. So we got some of those. And as you said in the beginning of the show, tomatoes are a fruit. So tomato and pineapple, tomato Goodness. and mango, tomato and papaya goes wonderful. So you want to put some fresh lime juice in. Okay. And some fresh garlic. Love that. And since we live in the... Islands of Aloha, we have fresh ginger. Ooh, ginger, which you can buy this stuff now, folks, anywhere that Mark is using. It keeps good, too, really, really good. You cut a, take a little piece off like that, peel it. Go ahead. And then we're going to puree this. Boy, these smells are all coming back. And we're going to add a little salt. So you're totally pureeing that, Mark. Yes. OK. And fresh pepper. So we're going to take this bowl that we magically have under here, and we're going to put, pour that in, and then we're going to fold some other ingredients in. Okay. So it's sort of a pureed and chunky salsa. Okay. So we take some of our diced yeah, tomatoes, let me hold that for you. Go please, ahead. Go ahead. and we're going to fold some of this in, and then we're going to take some fresh jalapeno. Okay. Want to give you that? Please. You got it. And then we have some fresh mint. How much of that you want? Oh. It's how much do you like? Yeah, okay, about that good. Much, Bobby. Want a little good. more? Please. All right. And then a little mint and cilantro. Are you putting mint in this too? Yes. Tell, tell me when. When. Okay. And then cilantro, shiny parsley. I love parsley. cilantro. Oh more. man, it's the best. Tell me. There we go. Enough. Enough. Okay. So this is going to be our pineapple tomato salsa. Doesn't now. That look great, guys. Yeah. One it up. Kick up. This one up. Now what we're going to do? What we've done. Here, I'll hold up. on to that. Please, thank you. you got this it. is your house. 
Uh, Go ahead, that looks delicious. What we do at Maui Tacos, especially the one on Fifth Avenue next to the Empire State Building. Good location. Uh, Where was it, that again? <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. That's my friend Regina. Judy, give her $20. Yeah. Uh, fresh tuna. We have fresh tuna. I bought some cod as well, which is beautiful down here in New York. And we have a marinade of fresh lime juice, pineapple juice, oregano, garlic, and uh, cilantro. Love that. And this is what we marinate all our meats and fish in at Maui Tacos. So well, besides fish tacos at Maui Tacos, there's also meat ones. Yes, we have but steak. But they're all of this island aloha flavors. Yes. We have Works for me. Steak, chicken. We have Who's coming? <laughs> we'll meet you in Maui. <laughs> And so what we do for our fish tacos, a lot of fish tacos, which are great, are deep fried. Uh, at Maui Tacos, we go ahead and dice and grill or saute our meat. Love that. So Really clean and healthy. Yes. So we're going to take a little vegetable oil. Yep. And then we're going to saute these quick. Yep. And why don't we go ahead and heat up some tortillas. Okay. In the skillet? In the skillet okay. right here. Nothing in the pan. Don't need anything in the pan. I agree. And then what you do, well, well you know what to do. It's beautiful. Here we go. So you cook this up really quick. Yep. And then we'll take our platter. I'll tell you, a lot of people don't make tacos like this, Mark. I get to tell you uh, that. Get some nice chips. Ah. If you have some guacamole, a little hot sauce. While we're doing this, I want to remind you that I brought this gift basket from the Hawaii Visitors Bureau since Thank the you, island bro. of Aloha. When they heard I was coming, they FedExed this here just for you. I love that, man. Thank you so much. A little bit of much. food products all Thank over you. from Hawaii. Thank you so much. All right. And thank all of you in here. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now while we're assembling these tacos. And when we come back, another notch. Stick around. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh. My good buddy Mark Elman, Maui Tacos, just opened here in Manhattan. You know where, where that big building is, right across the street. All right, so we got the tuna now that we're seeing. Now we have tuna. Okay. In Hawaii and in a lot of places uh, in America, you eat tuna sort of medium rare. Yes. So we're going to cook this medium rare. Okay. We're going to make Hawaiian style, as I would say. Okay. And we're going to make a little seared ahi fish taco with that. It sounds good to me. And then we'll tell me when. Uh, when, baby. You got it. All right. Look at that. Oh, is that beautiful? And Love we all that. know Ahi is the filet mignon of the Pacific. Perfect. Oh. So we're gonna make. And this is another type of taco now. Yes, it is. Got the codfish. Look at this. A little onion. A little onion. <laughs> and, and in Hawaii. A little we... of this. Yeah, please. A little tomato salad. And then. We have a little bit of salsa here. And this is heaven. Heaven on earth. A little lime juice. Squeeze a lime. There you All go. right, now the big test. Regina, you in on this? Come on, baby. <laughs> you got it, doll? Got it. Here, let Enjoy. me give you a quick little uh, one of these jobbers, you know, hospitality. <laughs> All right, what do I got? Cod one? Yes. All right, what do you got? I'm taking the ahi. You're taking the ahi, okay? Aloha. Wow. So fresh. So much flavor. Thank you. Maui Tacos, where? Next. Uh, San Antonio, Texas. We San open Antonio, next. Texas. Good luck, my buddy. Thank I can't you. wait to see you and the missus in Hawaii. Thank you all for coming. Aloha. Hawaii Tourist Commission, thank you. I'm Admiral Lugasi. See you tomorrow, everybody! Yeah.